Hi, welcome to another episode of Wikipedia Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Lee, also known as user Fazheto on English Wikipedia. So welcome to the 134th episode of Wikipedia Weekly. We're really glad today to have the folks from Wiki Loves Earth, which is a global uh, competition. And we're gonna be joined by a number of the folks who are involved with that and have organized that over the years. And it's a really exciting thing that kicks off today, actually. So before we get started, let's make sure that you all are watching and know how to respond to us. So we're live on four platforms right now. We are on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Periscope or Twitter, and on Twitch as well. So on any of those platforms, you can actually chat back to us and we can actually see those comments on our screen and we can bring them up individually to respond to them. So feel free throughout the show to have comments, questions, and we can bring up anything that's relevant and show them on the screen. If you're using Facebook, then something that we can do is to show your face and your name, but you do need to give StreamYard, which is the system we're using, permission to show that. So if you're on Facebook Live, make sure that you go to, in a web browser, StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Yeah, and if you visit that site, it'll just ask you, can we show your name and face when you leave a comment? on the system and hopefully you'll say yes and we can show you really uh, more detailed information on screen. So again, if you're a Facebook Live user, please do that. Uh, if you're a YouTube user, um, those that information we'll see automatically. And then if you're on Periscope or Twitch, you can also respond to us as well. So without further ado, let me bring in our regular co-hosts here. We have Richard Nipel. hello. Hi, glad to join. Uh, user Pharos from Wikimedia New York City, and uh, we were involved with uh, some of the first uh, photo contests, Wiki uh, Takes Manhattan and Wiki Loves Art, and glad to see uh, Wiki Loves Earth going strong. Awesome. We also have Jan from Sweden. Yes, from Sweden, but in Amsterdam right but now. <laughs> yes, I am active in Wikimedians for Sustainable Development, and this year I'm also in the jury for the Swedish version of Wiki Loves Earth. Oh, that's great. And we are so happy to have three guests from the Wiki Loves Earth project. So we first have Anastasia. Hello. Hi, everyone. Great. And uh, we also have uh, Anton from the Ukrainians. Hello, Anton. Hi. Hi. I'm glad to join. And we also have Mikola. Hi, Mikola. Hello, and nice to join this panel. Great. So we uh, have a lot to talk about, and we are actually on day one, is that correct, of kicking off Wiki Loves Earth? So maybe, Anton, you can tell us a little bit about what is Wiki Loves Earth and how did it get started? Because it is uh, quite a success now. So tell us a little bit about the background of how it got, got started. Uh, OK, thank you. And uh, nice to be today here with you. Uh, so Wiki Loves Earth is basically an annual photographic competition which is devoted to picturing nature heritage sites. Uh, so the basic general goal of Wiki Loves Earth is to create the biggest database of free photos of nature, natural heritage from across the world. And uh, Wiki Loves Earth takes part every year since 2013. Uh, it takes part in uh, from May to July this year with different dates for each country. Uh, Wiki Loves Earth is organized by volunteers, so only a couple of dozen countries are present. So, for example, there is no uh, Wiki Loves Earth in the US, uh, but uh, a couple of countries have started uh, Wiki Loves Earth in May, on May 1st today, and uh, a couple of dozen countries are on their way. Uh, and basically, that's it. Wiki Loves Earth is the second biggest Wikimedia photo contest at, uh, after Wiki Loves Monuments. And uh, uh, over this time, since 2013, when it was first founded in Ukraine, and since 2014, when it became international, uh, we gathered almost 600,000 photos of natural heritage from different countries, different continents. Great. And, and Anastasia, you can maybe give some more context. This is actually out of the Ukrainian chapter. Is that right? Once again? 
This is these the contest started out of the Ukrainian chapter, is yes, that right? Yes. So the contest has, has started uh, in 2013, firstly in Ukraine, and the next year in 2014, it became international. So more countries joined. Uh, and uh, the, in 2014, 16 countries uh, started to organize their, their, their local contest worldwide. And uh, then year by year, the number was. Uh, uh, was getting bigger and bigger and the last year in 2019 we had 37 countries worldwide or organizing their local contests uh, so this year of course we hope to see even bigger num bigger number for now we have 24 countries joined great to see that map with a nice green countries colored in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're we're gonna have to work on that North America participation. I'm not sure why yeah. <laughs> there has not been yeah, about it. <laughs> so uh, Richard and I are active in the North America community. We will make sure to to encourage our folks to do something in this area. Um, so uh, Mikola, tell us a little bit more about the contest and how do people get involved with this? Yeah, so this is working on a very federative and collaborative basis. The federative aspect is that every country organizes the contest on their own, in, with their own rules, with their own uh, framework. So basically, we have very few international rules. The first one is that we require all photos to be self-taken. So you should not upload basically pictures you found on the internet or pictures that your friend made. We really want all people to take their own original photos and uh, to make sure that we have uh, no copyright issues, that we are absolutely clear who is the winner, and that we have only one upload per, like one one uploader uploads their own pictures. Mm -hmm. We require them to upload pictures during the contest period in their own country. So if your country's period is May, you need to upload them in May. If your country's period is July, you can upload them in July. Uh, but we absolutely have no obligation to make them uploaded during this contest period. Uh, you can take it whenever you want. It can be a picture taken 10 years ago, and it would be perfectly fine for us. Or it can be a picture taken yesterday if you managed to get a natural site yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that's something where you can upload anything you want from your own collection or from your recent photographies. We want the people to upload photos under a free license, obviously, because we are on Commons and we want creative Commons content. And we want it to contain an unidentified natural monument, natural park, protected area, whatsoever. So here we give the liberty to every country to decide what is the areas they accept. That's, that depends a lot on what is protected in each country, what is specific to their local context. Context, uh, co <clears throat> their local context, sorry. The goal is to make them as flexible as possible. If they have like 20 national parks in the country, maybe they will want to accept all regional sites in the country. If they have 5,000, maybe they will stop at that level. If they have absolutely no protected nature in the country because their government doesn't publish lists, for example, then they might accept all remarkable sites which are kind of recognized as protected by their country. That's something where local organizers have their say and that's where we give them freedom. And there are some technical points, like we want a picture to have at least uh, two megapixels, simply because well, mo every modern camera is capable of doing that and we want to be able to nominate this picture for a featured picture in Commons at least because a smaller picture will not be useful. And we obviously encourage people to upload as high resolution as possible. Right. Other than that, we give the entire liberty to local organizers to organize promotional events. Well, this year it would be more tricky to do real life events. That would be most online promotion. We encourage them to reach to as many people as possible. There are banners on site notice on Wikipedia pages and all other Wikimedia projects. You could have probably seen, seen them if Wikilabs is already running in your country. And uh, they can encourage local partners, they can encourage uh, photography groups, major production groups to participate, to spread the word and to 
make as many people participate in Wikilab Tours as possible. In previous years, we had uh, thousands of participants. I think our record is around uh, 10,000 uploaders. And we obviously want to reach this, this level again this year. Very cool. Uh, and maybe one of you can share your screen and maybe show us some of the results from previous years or some of the highlights of them. Uh, there are already really beautiful photos that I've seen on the site here. Um, and Jan, tell us a little bit about what you're doing uh, with the local version of Wiki Loves Earth. Yes, so so I'm in the jury, so I get the pleasure to look at all the fantastic images. Like this is the the best job you can do in a in a Wikimedia project because you just get overwhelmed with all these beautiful images, and then you have to go through them and find the really like the creme de la creme of, of the images and ship them forward to the international contest. Right. But, but more generally in, in Sweden, in the contest this year, we have like, uh, like you explained before, we have like different kind of lists. And now this year we added some items to the list. So this year we added the biospheres as defined by UNESCO. Uh, they haven't been on the list, but now they've been imported to Wikidata and and on, on our lists. And I think also we have what we call nature memories or uh, natural heritage or something like that, like giant big boulders or something like that, that which had, has also these myths in the folklore around them. So I was a little bit curious about this with the, the different kinds of lists in different kinds of uh, different uh, countries. And you, as perhaps international organizers, see the variation in this. What's uh, what's the span, and what's the more odd things that you see in some countries? Anyone what's, want to take a stab? What's something very unusual that was uh, listed as a natural monument that you someone took a good picture of? Perhaps you've noticed. Yeah, I guess if anyone from the team, and what are some notable things over the years that uh, since 2013 that you've seen, whether it's imaginative uh, or really awesome things that you've seen in the contest? I would say that probably is the most uh, awesome thing that you're seeing our landscapes, especially people like mountains and uh, seaside, because those are obvious favorites for a long time. Right. It was the, the most, like the most cliche, but the most beautiful landscape you are seeing is maybe a sunrise or a sunset in a mount on the mountain in the mountains, especially in autumn when colors are red and yellow everywhere. Those are working pretty much. Here. We are getting a lot of this pretty much every year. Uh, maybe some mountain uh, with uh, red and yellow forests in a fog in uh, autumn at sunset is something like which would be the, the ultimate level you can get except that we understand that to get these pictures this person probably had to climb uh, to this mountain in the evening and get back in the night or on the or to get a sunrise they had to climb in the early morning to be at the right place at the right time so behind all these pictures there are a lot of work and uh, we know that participants probably have spent hours to make the right shot and to, to make right. sure they are at the right place at the right time. We obviously have, oh, here we see the winners. <laughs> so we have a lot of wonderful pictures of animals and plants. Every year we, every year we are getting as even, even more special pictures of animals. Mm. Like this is a winner winning photos from 2019, which uh, is coming from Germany, and which is the uh, Bande de Moiselle in uh, Gilters Sea Nature Reserve in Germany. So this is a quite small natural site, which is not a very touristic one, but which mm -hmm. happens to be known for their for their insects, and this photographer has taken this great picture. So that's something we are seen more and more with years because people are getting better equipment, 
people are looking for some more interesting angles, and we are getting wonderful pictures like this, where we have a very encyclopedic look, because that's a thing you can perfectly use on Wikipedia, which you can use on Wikispecies, on Wikidata. That's not very touristic image, but very useful for illustrating projects. And we encourage people, if they can, to upload images like that uh, doc by documenting what species they are taking at what place so that we can use them as widely as possible. Right. Maybe, Anton, you want to continue with the next ones? Yeah. Run the Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I wanted to say that I joined the, the contest just this year in 2020. And when I, I uh, at, the, at the moment when I joined, I started to look through the previous years. I started to go through the comments pages, through the uh, all the winning photos of previous years and choosing some. Uh, for example, when I was preparing uh, content for the Wiki Loves Earth uh, social media pages, I needed to choose some photos to use. And I was sometimes I was stuck for a long time looking at the beauty of uh, some sites. Uh, getting to know some sites, so I found out a lot for myself as well, and um, I'm really fascinated how educational is it, how Im impactful uh, the contest is. Uh, also, as uh, we mentioned previously, more than uh, five five hundred thousand pictures uh, were uploaded uh, during the, all these years, and among them, it's important that. Uh, 100 uh, sorry thousands of pictures were used in the uh, wiki project so uh, we aimed uh, our aim is to increase these numbers and to spread awareness about these protected sites and uh, we are excited about this year okay have you, you looked at uh, like how many people have viewed articles that have have the images from the contest there must be quite a lot um, probably millions um, yeah, that's clearly millions. Yeah. I don't have the exact number, but I have checked a couple of years ago and we were at something like 30 millions or something like that. Oh, that's I great impact. I think we have grown even further from that time. From the time. So we should sure. be probably maybe at 100 millions. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are here, gorgeous. Yeah, so here, well, this is, for example, a nice example of the number seven, I think, yeah. That's a nice example of a collaboration between people and nature. So that's a natural site in Bangladesh, which is the Ratargul Swamp Forest. And here we see on the bottom side, we have a traditional, like, uh, we have a very typical forest for this region, which is a protected natural site. And on the upper side of the image, we have traditional boats from local people. So here you see how people are living with the nature, at the same time not harming it. And I think that's one of the great examples of how you can make a living, basically a living photo. And it must be that, that since 2013, you've seen a lot of changes in technology affect how the contest is run, right? Our cell phone pictures are so much better. And then drone, this, this must be a drone shot, right? Uh, yeah, I think yes. We are getting quite a few of them uh, this year, right? Mm -hmm. Back in, back in twenty thirteen, we have picture we have people taking pictures with their tablets, right. which was not great, but which was useful because <laughs> you can still create Wikipedia with it. This year, we obviously we are getting drone photos, and we know that in some countries, people are already doing special nominations for drone photos because that's becoming a thing and they are getting outreach to networks of drone owners, for example, in their countries. Yeah, the, 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 the prevalence of drones and how cheap they are and how more people can work with them have gotten us some really amazing shots and comments now, ones that you could not have imagined just 10 years ago, right? Wow, these are beautiful shots here. You mentioned earlier that you didn't need to take the photographs now, but rather that you could do an inventory in your hard drive and upload what you took earlier. 
I, I guess that's even more uh, like uh, relevant this year. How, how have you been thinking about uh, when organizing this uh, photo contest and, and the ongoing pandemics? Good question. Yeah, what do you think the, uh, the COVID uh, situation now with so many people you know, as life's altered, how is that going to affect this year's contest? I I don't see it necessarily as a bad thing. It just kind of shifts the dynamic a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Some people might actually have more time to be outdoors now with the uh, lockdown in many ways. Well, I would say that this year we are discouraging people from long distance travel, for example, because that's not a relevant thing in the current context. Right. Except that we know that some countries are already getting on the getting on the lowest side of their epidemic curve like Taiwan for example <laughs> or South Korea where probably in a month people would be able to travel freely around the country and would be able to go to some wonderful sites but we think that this year it's an opportunity to take a picture of some small local site in your area if you have not picture if you don't have mm -hmm. nice pictures yet because we know that from year to year we have people going to the same spectacular places we are we are having people to go to that most instagrammed uh, place in Aust in the country for example in australia people tend to upload pictures of uluru mountain because that's the symbol of australia and that's a very touristic photo everybody every australian or every visitor to australia wants to take and in that way, we might want to say to people like, look, you have spent your previous years traveling around the country and taking pictures of all this wonderful jewels of your country. Maybe this year it's the time to visit a local forest or maybe cycle to a lake next to you, which are probably also protected. And there are much bigger chances that we don't have pictures of them on Wikipedia, simply because many people who have probably thought like who would need pictures of my local lake right. who would need them that's that will attract not thousands but only maybe 10 visitors per month to this wikipedia article but this wikipedia article still needs pictures and that's a great opportunity this year may makes it a great opportunity for people to explore what's around them where they can cycle during their weekend for example and uh, explore some hidden jewels just a few kilometers or miles from your place. Right. And on the other side, if you're an experienced photographer and uh, you have a huge bank of photos and you don't know what to do during this lockdown because <laughs> you, you're sitting at home and uh, you're thinking what you can do, that's a great uh, thing you can do. You can make a lot of useful things by looking at your collections and sharing with in sharing them with the entire world right and i think that's that's a great thing and actually we might want to have another episode where we talk about um you know what folks can do during a time of covid with commons and their you know contributing content as jan said this is a perfect time to go through your backlog of whether it's google photos or the photos you've taken over the past years i know i probably have hundreds of photos that i had the intention of uploading the commons but haven't had the time to go back and and leaf through them. So what's funny is that this picture we're looking at right now just sparked a memory saying, wait, I remember taking this picture in Malaysia that I wanted to upload to Commons. And this is a great example of how like, okay, this is the perfect time I'm sitting at home to take this photo that I had of a similar cave system in Malaysia and upload this. So thanks for sparking that idea, Jan, because I think yeah, I know. <laughs> I know quite, quite a few Wikimedians have been going through their old files and think of like this is their big chance to uh, they have a little spare time to upload uh, to upload some photos and hopefully some some maybe some some uh, people who are more experienced photographers who aren't even part of the movement yet maybe you've right. taken some pictures in previous years and you know they they they're looking for something to do they can't go out and take a lot of great new photographs of uh, wild spots around the world but maybe this is the year that they want to contribute some of their photos to the commons and uh, and share them and also you know anyone who's going to visit some of the more unloved green spots in the world because it's not everything's the Grand Canyon and uh, and Victoria Falls um, <laughs> hopefully we can get some of those up too. 
Yeah, I think that's that's a great idea for a show is just doing kind of, you know, showing folks uh, through some kind of cast like this how to upload photos or how to even sift through or select photos. Uh, Jim Henderson, who's a photographer in our community, has said, Drat, drones are tightly limited in New York City. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is those remote areas, really great for drones because there's not that much regulation, which is quite the nice. Um, so anyone else who's watching out there, do you have any other ideas on how we can be still very productive producers or contributors to commons and pictures and video, even though most of us have to kind of stay in our same place? As Jan said, go any, through your archives and find stuff. Richard? Does anybody have any drone alternatives, any any balloon or kite hacks that might be appropriate for the Wikimedia movement? Uh, let <laughs> us know. Perhaps you want to apply for a rapid grant for that. <laughs> Rap, rapid grant for kayaks? Yeah. No, no, for for uh, for, for kites and, and balloons. Oh, kites. I thought you said kayaks. Kites. No, not, I mean, I guess you could do kayaks, but I, I think like right. something flying. That's not a drone. That's a little bit less scary to the government. Yeah. I, I don't know if you folks are familiar with Nasima. So uh, the, the Wiki Loves Earth crew, we had Nasima Shabun here talking about how they were taking photos of these um, Kasors in Algeria and Tunisia, these archaeological sites, and they're forbidden from doing drones. So we're talking about what if you could fly a kite and just hang a GoPro or something from there? And that's legit, right? You don't have to get super high. You just have to get high enough to do those things. So get creative. What are some other things you can try? Um, but I love this idea of, you know, not just giving up, but finding different ways to go through your 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 uh, your assets to to, to to donate them. Um, any other things that are useful to point out in this list? Oh, I think you had mentioned, uh, one of you, about the stats. So let's show you some stats from previous years. So tell us a little bit about this page on WMF Labs, which is pretty cool. There's a whole Wiki Loves stat page here. Anyone want to explain a little bit about this? Uh, so basically, this page shows the stats for Wiki Loves Earth since the it's found in, in 2013. So we can see that uh, by 2017, the number of photos uploaded was uh, steadily growing. Then we saw uh, a bit, then we saw a little bit lower number, maybe because uh, everything was uh, had already been photographed. But <laughs> we see, uh, uh, we still see a pretty, um, pretty impressive stats. So for example, in 2019, almost 95,000 of pictures were uploaded. And uh, if you click on the 2019 page, you can see the stats for uh, stats for the 2019. For some reason, the page doesn't open for me. But nevertheless, mm. <laughs> we see that uh, the, we see that the country with the highest number of photos the last year was Germany. With uh, uh, it was uh, on the first place, and then we had Ukraine and I think uh, Russia. But yes, as uh, Mukova pointed out, we also had a huge India effect. India also brought uh, a lot of pictures along, so it was also reflected on the stats. Hmm. So I think you, you, it looks like you do have the same phenomena that Wiki Loves Monuments has, is that each year you're successful, you remove candidates from the table. So you uh, make it a little bit harder for each year to be as successful. Is that correct? You mean countries or you mean uh, natural sites? I guess natural sites. Like this, but I guess you I mean, there's nothing stopping people from contributing a second or third or fourth photo of a waterfall, right? You can keep contributing even if you have a... Yeah, and the uh, great thing about, about wikis is you can always fight over which is the best picture of the waterfall. <laughs> <laughs> and winning winning a prize in Wiki Loves Earth or runner-up is a great argument on the talk page to say that, hey, my waterfall picture is the best. Right, right. Well, that's one of the reasons why Indy is not participating every year because they, they are getting 30,000 pictures. And many of them are from the few very famous sites of the country. So mm -hmm. they, we know that like in 2017, they had a very hard time uh, sorting out all these pictures to find out which of them are really useful, which of them they can really use on Wikipedia, and which of them they are just putting on the backlog on commons. Mm -hmm. 
Because getting right. 3,000 pictures is also hard to source in all afterwards. <laughs> and some of the photo contests, like we we give like more points to ones that are like harder to get or farther away or less popular. Um, maybe you play with that. Maybe, maybe not this year. In I don't know. The country, but for example, in in Ukraine, uh, the Ukrainian local contest tries to promote photographing sites which are not uh, already il uh, illustrated. So. Uh, Ukraine gives awards both for quality of photos and for quantity. And when uh, considering awards for the number of pictures uploaded, uh, the, the number of pictures previously uh, existing on comments of these particular sites uh, is taken into consideration. So, uh, because uh, in general, we have uh, more than 8,000 uh, nature heritage sites in Ukraine, but uh, and for the seven years of Vikelos uh, Earth, uh, almost a half of them uh, has been uh, illustrated through Vikelos Earth, but we still have the second half to be uh, photographed and uploaded to comments. So in Ukraine, we do promote uh, I think, photographing. Correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong. I think maybe one of the motivations why Wikimedia Ukraine started this project is that um, the cultural heritage sites in Ukraine, were not as well documented as some of the as some of the natural heritage sites, and um, and so maybe it was it felt like a better fit to to launch some of the the natural heritage sites for a photography project for for Ukraine, and um, obviously it's been useful all around the world. Um. I think the motivation was kind of double. One of them that we had a lot of pictures of cultural heritage, but not of natural heritage, because in our first year in Wikilovs monuments in Ukraine, we got phenomenal numbers like 35,000 photos, I think. And we have found out like, oh, those are so many famous places that had Wikipedia articles for years, but no photo or a very bad photo taken by some mobile phone in 2005. And now all of them have so great illustrations that we are very happy with them. So why not expand it to the natural heritage? And the second thing which was bothering us on Wikilovs monuments is freedom of panorama. We, don't, we didn't have freedom of panorama in Ukraine, and it was kind of a very difficult concept to explain to people because that's not something widely known in the world, that you need a, a permission from an architect uh, to upload a picture of a building. So we are saying, like, nature is not copyrighted. So that's something where we, it would be very easy to us to, to do it. And we know that what we we have discovered by going worldwide that we have a lot of countries where cultural heritage is not very well documented. I'm thinking, for example, of Sub-Saharan Africa, where like the tradition of documenting cultural heritage is more of a colonial one, where they have most, but the tradition of protecting their nature is something they have from ancestral times, that like they have their local forests, they have taken care for, of these forests for centuries. So it's kind of natural for them to protect, to share pictures of their forests, of their animals, of their deserts, and so on. So that's something where it's also useful for local context if you don't, context if you don't have huge experience, if you don't have huge uh, lists of cultural heritage, Maybe your natural heritage is also worth sharing. Even, even I think Italy had had a lot of troubles participating in Wikilovs monuments, and no country has more monuments than Italy. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Italy has very complex laws on on cultural heritage. Right. So right. I think they had a lot of success in Wikilovs Earth last year when they participated for the first time. They had like a few thousand uploaders, I think, and they should be. In the top, yeah, they are. They have almost thousand uploaders and uh, three thousand, three point seven thousand pictures. Great to see it spreading all around the world. <laughs> yeah. So Nepal, can you explain Nepal? That's pretty cool. That Nepal is way up there as well, number four. They have the most beautiful mountains of the world. <laughs> <laughs> In Algeria. So this is great to see folks you don't typically see at the top of any of our charts for articles or contributors finding different ways to be 
highly productive members of the community. So Nepal, Indonesia, uh, that's great. Sri Lanka, uh, Algeria, that's great. Bangladesh, Benin, Latvia. Have you seen, have you seen a mix of, uh, of people who are existing Wikimedia contributors and new contributors that have joined the project? Yeah, you can see on the right hand side the percent of new editors. Oh, neat. Oh, that's great. I didn't realize. Uploaders registered after competition start. That's a great stat. So Russia, a lot, 87% registered. This is fascinating. So that means you're telling me almost all the contributors for Indonesia are newbies? Yes, and that's like in all in most almost all countries you have more than 50% of contributors to register in after the contest begins. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know that's if you can make the statistics for Wikimedia Commons in general because you you see a spike in the activity of newbies in May and June every year because of Wikilabs errors and in September because of Wikilabs monuments. Mhm. Mm that's great. And what do you think that, I mean, this is amazing because, you know, anyone who's done edit-a-thons before um, knows that the yield of how many people become Wikimedians is like less than 5%. So seeing these numbers is just really like, wow, we've got a really interesting uh, avenue to get new folks more involved. What do you think, what are the uh, publicity, ways to get publicity out for Wiki Loves Earth and Wiki Loves Monuments that you think have been successful? Because this is pretty astonishing. We're getting hundreds and thousands of new Commons uploaders here. So how do you think the how have you been successful in getting this much publicity for it? What are the ways? Do you buy ads anywhere? Do you use the banners on Wikipedia, um, the site notice? Um, how are you getting the word out? Uh, well, I can add two points. First of all, the most effective thing is that we don't do it like by ourselves, the, by the international team. The coolest thing about Wikilabs Earth is that every the contest in every country is organized by a local team, and the local team does most to promote the contest in a local country. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, last year we had 37 local teams, so 37 teams were working on the promotion of the contest. And secondly, yes, uh, the banner, the central notice banner uh, on Wikimedia projects is very helpful because when people who are uh, reading Wikipedia see the banner promoting the contest, which they can uh, quite easily participate in, they are they get interested naturally. Yeah, I think that's great. We've uh, you know I've I've been involved with some of that, not with Wikipedia Observe particularly, but in some uses of the banner. Um, and I think it's great that we can when we can use the banner not just for fundraising, but for you know uh, consciousness raising, for edit raising, for uh, growing the movement as a whole. And it's also great when you have these international campaigns and you see volunteers step forward to translate the Wiki Loves Earth banner and other banners into dozens of different languages. Um, so we can show it on all these different Wikipedias and different language projects. So that's very positive. Uh, and I, I, I see it now here, but I think social media and like Facebook is not to be underestimated, right? We know that there's a huge chunk of our community that now hangs out on Facebook, which probably makes the older Wikimedians very uncomfortable thinking that these for-profit social media networks are so important, but I think they are. Do you have any reflections or opinions on how important like social media properties are to the operation of Wiki Loves Earth? Has it been a factor in getting the word out? Uh, I believe that nowadays social media plays a crucial role actually in delivering information to people, especially to people that don't know about the contest. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, uh, many of our participating countries, they have their, their own page for the Wiki Loves Earth contest or they post on their Wikimedia pages. Mm -hmm. And also they use, um, some of them use Instagram and some of them use Twitter as well. So right. uh, when I was going through all of their pages, I, I saw uh, the activity is quite good and they are growing as well as our page. Uh, we have many shares. We will try to develop it more and more to reach out to new people, to reach out to people that don't know about the contest. And uh, I think 
social media nowadays is a way to do that. Ah, and we haven't even looked at your your flyer here. So this is a ah, I'm not logged in. But anyway, this is uh, the flyer on how to take part. And I think it's really nicely designed. I don't think very many instructions in our movement are as clear as that. We usually tell people, go visit this wiki page. And it's like 10 pages long and lots of details. So it's really nice you boil it down into something very basic for people to, to digest here. Can you tell yeah, us a little bit about the design? Or was what was the thought process in making these uh, simpler instructions? Uh, I, I believe. Started, go ahead. I would just pro I had just probably wanted to add that we have found it out by Germans, I think, who made a study. Like because they are Germans, they made a study on what is the best <laughs> design for like all of these pages, and they said that basically, if your page is at least is a huge blog with a lot of posts, with a lot of information, people will not use it. But if it's something simple and readable, people will get engaged. And right. so I'm going to, and so Anastasia can tell how she did it. And thank you, Anastasia, for doing it. <laughs> yeah, I believe uh, that people perceive information visually, most of people. And mm -hmm. the most important thing is to try, to try to imagine how you would react if you see the picture for the first time, what you, uh, what, what element uh, you will see the fir at, the f at first, what uh, elements you will put your attention the most, uh, what is important for you. So when I, um, firstly, I, I try to put as much information as possible for me to just to understand what is more what what are the most important parts and then i just was cutting 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 and just uh, <laughs> leaving the more the basic information the most basic information that uh, that is needed for the person that is not familiar with the concept at all to understand it from i don't know like not so long time not looking at it for like 10 minutes but just to understand it uh, fastly and to understand it clearly enough to understand the concept. Of course, there are uh, also links and you, you can go and uh, surf the website, the social media pages, the guidelines on comments and uh, get to know more details, but uh, you can uh, you can get to know all the basic stuff here. So I think it's really important to to simplify, <laughs> to right. use vi visual elements, to understand how the person thinks looking at the image. So that helps. Yeah, I think uh, it's great to see that. Unfortunately, most people in our community are more is better uh, when it comes to design and recruiting people. That's absolutely not the case. It has to be simple and it has to be non-scary. And I think too much in our movement is scary and intimidating to people. So. Congratulations on that. And I love the fact that you're showing one of the actual photos. So it inspires people. So inspiring people is also something that's not very, I don't want to say common, but it's sometimes not a very high priority in our movement. So that's great to see that. And I'm glad I'm also glad that you don't expose all these things like it must be this license and it must you need to understand CC and all this stuff. Like, don't put all the scary stuff first. Like try to get people to walk in the door <laughs> first, right? One, two, three, and it's, everything's nice and green, and the different shades of green. It's beautiful. It's, I, I like the, uh, and it, there's a summary, and then there's a slightly longer thing, and then there's a slightly longer thing than that. So you get people at all levels. So it's, it's very well designed. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. So I, I think we should be a, uh, uh, absolutely in the case studies of how to do effective communication within our, uh, our movement. That's great. So, uh, and then, oh, you have one about how to organize. So this is nice. So you're like, don't try to put everything in one basket. Organizers have a different type of uh, graphic, right? So I have a question. Um, it's uh, the, obviously the contest, international contest is starting today. Is it still possible if you have a, if you have, if your country, there isn't a contest yet, can, is it still possible to organize a small contest in your country? Yes. Yes, uh, you can. the The contents runs from uh, from today, from the first of May till the thirty first of July. Traditionally, the contest was uh, held uh, during two months in May and June, uh, but this year we have extended the timeline, so we have one extra month, uh, July, uh, because of the world health situation, and the, as many of many of uh, countries can't. Uh, imagine the situation can to maybe prepare um, in a timely manner for the contest. So we added one extra month, July, to for them to do that. 
So it's still possible to join. Just um, check check our pages, check our website, and um, maybe who, someone listens to us and has an idea to organize the contest in their countries uh, or regions. Uh, you can check out how to do that and write to us, and we will support you on every step of the contest. Great, thank you so much. Not too late, Richard. We can convince our North yeah. Americans. Uh, yeah, we just share something from the Philippines. <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of our viewers, uh, Philippines used an old tree trunk as the Wikilove's Earth Trophy. So you can always get creative uh, locally and use your uh, local natural uh, heritage. It, so, yes, yeah, tell us about that. There, <laughs> so, different folks localize the awards. Is that right? There's cool. local awards as well as global awards. I, 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 I don't. Um, do, do other do other groups have like creative physical prizes, <laughs> like tree trunks, <laughs> perhaps acorns? I don't know, <laughs> rocks. Well, yeah. Tell us. There's, there's one. Well, one of the major prizes is a scholarship to go to Wikimania. Is that right? Yeah. So we typically award a like the first prize is usually a scholarship to go to Wikimania if it happens in 2021. 20, fingers crossed. And uh, if a person is not, uh, and for the remaining prices, like the prices from the place from second to fifteenth, are usually vouchers for online shops like Amazon, like eBay, or Alibaba, or whatever is popular in your country. So we are mm -hmm. trying to make prizes kind of significant enough to attract people, because you need to make it sound great make it sound like something people want to win because we know that not all local countries are about, exp about expensive prizes some 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 wikimedia chapters some user groups have means to do big prizes like something really like photo equipment or something like that but many of them are given only small awards like it may be something creative like a tree trunk it may be something creative like uh, I, I don't remember all the stories, but we did had some customized diplomas. We are encouraging people to do something very ecological or greener, like uh, doing prizes from recycled materials or giving some ecological prizes, like uh, shopping bags or something like that. So we know that not every community is able to offer expensive prizes so we want to make sure that international prizes are interesting for people but of yeah, course that's... communities have as many room for creativity as they can organize in their context so if you have an idea of some creative local prize please go and do, and do it yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm asking Butch if he has a picture of that tree trunk. I'm very interested in that award. Um, I don't know if it's on comments already. Um, and and I. Tall, I tree trunk? Is it? Is it like? Is it like this tall and this wide? <laughs> I'm hoping it's not that big, but uh, um, yeah, I I think there's there's a huge opportunity here, and I think the last question I'd love to ask you is since 2013. Uh, Wikidata has become a lot more prominent in our uh, community and our movement. Has uh, what is the role of Wikidata in Wiki Loves Earth? Whether it's um, things that other people have introduced, or you know, how has it changed since 2013 in terms of Wikidata's use? I would say it really depends on the country. Uh, some countries have now moved their natural heritage lists to Wikidata, so that they basically use a Wikidata item ID as an identity as a key to their photos. Hmm. Like what we have done from the very beginning, from back in 2013, that we encouraged people to make uh, their lists with uh, identifiers and key with identifiers, keys, or QADs for Wikidata and direct links for uploading pictures. So if you go on uh, any list in a participating country, we encourage them to add a button to their list that automatically generates uh, description and categories for files on Wikimedia Commons. Some of this information is taken from local Wikipedia. Some of this can be taken from Wikidata. 
And uh, the idea is that to make the process as simple for people and as possible so that they don't have to go through all the commons manuals, that they can simply click on the button and add their picture and get it in the right category with the right description. And mm -hmm. Wikidata is quite helpful for this, actually. We don't have any like strict rules that, that people must use Wikidata because we know that not all communities are strong with it. So we are not Wikidata Nazis. <laughs> we are right. we are using like soft power to say to people that if Wikidata is a good thing to do, so you should do it. Right. Uh, we had a great comment here um, related to the design of that flyer, uh, making Wiki Loves at Earth like a corporate contest will attract photographers who would like to be seen as professionals rather than just people who'd want to help a cause. So I think it's interesting, right? If you put out professional looking promotional materials and instructions, you gather a certain type of person or you, you make it more accessible to those types of folks, right? Rather than just pointing them to a Wiki page that has the same design as in 2001 when we first started. Um, do you see that as well? Like having, uh, you know, going on to Instagram where photographers hang out, making flyers and, and diagrams and instructions that look more like what you'd see from a museum or from a professional organization gets you a certain type of involvement of other folks. Maybe Anastasia, you might've seen that. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll be working on more materials. We'll be working on more promotion and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think you're right. It, it can be that um, it's interesting thought. I haven't thought about that, to be honest. <laughs> From my experience, we uh, our aim is two audiences. The first audience is uh, uh, photographers, really skilled people who make cool photos, and we are trying to uh, gather really cool photos. But then the second audience is just uh, ordinary people who have uh, some, picture of, some pictures of their natural heritage sites, and they can share, uh, share them on commons, share a lot of them on commons, and quality is actually not the most important aspect for us, but uh, it's, uh, of course, it's always a nice bonus to if the photo is uh, of high quality. Right, right. That's great. And I, I think uh, definitely think about the, you know, the contest is uh, for n a number of weeks, but we'd love to have you back talking about either results halfway through, or if you want to show how people can work on certain work lists or certain processes to upload their content. We'd love to see that um, because we've always wanted to have some kind of more commons oriented stuff. You know, Jan does a lot of Wikidata th stuff. I do a lot of Wikidata stuff, but it'd be great to see more commons oriented tutorials and walkthroughs on this channel. So we'd love to have you back sometime to show us more of that. Hmm. And it would, would be very nice to see the variants from different countries, like because the it will depend on where you contribute to, how what the actual system is. To, to use. So I know on the Swedish lists, there are lists on Wikipedia, and you just click uh, on the nature reserve, and it will upload it with correct uh, categories to commons. So that's very easy in one way, but it also hides one of the trickier parts, like how do you do an actual upload on commons? You were talking about that earlier, Andrew, that like the uploads is quite tough, but here you enter through a campaign and you get like <laughs> shielded from some of these. Right. And in fact, um, I don't want to go in too long, but we haven't even asked you about what you think of structured data on commons, which is a new thing in the last year, which adds a whole nother, in a good way, whole layer of power, but a la layer of real complexity. So as Jan was saying, we were thinking of an episode of this uh, podcast just walking through the commons upload process and now you're being asked and about all these different things like oh do you want to tag this do you want to put a caption on it and in fact now if you look at the upload process it's pretty pretty intimidating because there's a lot of optional things that are asked of you when you upload I wonder if you have any experience with that um, or any opinions on how the commons uploading process is today or or how it involve how it affects the involvement of folks in wiki loves earth i 
think that when uh, structured data was introduced last year, it was right during Wikilabs Earth, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. I think it was May 2019 or something like that. So we didn't have this last year in our guidelines. Mm. And some people were surprised. Like, <laughs> they are seeing so many extra windows, so many extra right. buttons yeah. that are not in the guidelines, that are not <laughs> in, uh, on the help pages yet, because help was not yet well written for it. Oh, no. So we had a few questions on that. But I think that most people reacted in a correct way. So most people, when you they were asked uh, to add a caption, they added something reasonable, actually. They added a reasonable caption to their picture. Sometimes uh, they basically copied uh, the same thing uh, multiple times. Like they have uploaded a picture of Niagara Falls. What is a caption Niagara Falls? What does it depict Niagara Falls? <laughs> Which probably not exactly what was expected, but I think that <laughs> yeah. people, but I think that people basically uh, survived with it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Perhaps that's a learning for uh, Wikimedia Foundation to check when there are very large campaigns in the movement going on. <laughs> I should say there, there's, there are big campaigns like this. There are small campaigns. It's actually fairly easy to set up a small campaign. Um, so if people have other creative ideas um, and they like to, you know, they're inspired by Wikileaks Earth to try it out in another domain, um, it's fairly easy to start out just like you even just create an upload wizard type thing uh, uh, for a particular campaign. So you might want to try that. Yeah. So I, I think you're right. The, the caption part here is what most people see. I mean, I got to tell you, I'm a veteran uploader. This still bites me all the time where I say, okay, I'm gonna edit this. And I think this is the most important thing. And I keep going, I think, oh, I'll skip this. this is, but the optional thing is first, that's kind of weird as a user interface. So I will often like, oh, I have to copy and paste that. And then I've got, oh, and I need to guess these categories. Like, I don't know how, how Commons does these things. So what do I do here? I need to guess at categories. Um, and then that's just the beginning of things. Like later on, you'll get things for structured data. So yeah, maybe a whole episode, maybe walking people through efficient ways of navigating the interface because I feel like I'm almost like registering with a site that's trying to upsell you on things left and right. Like add tags, add captions, add this, add that. I'm like, I'm not, I just want to upload my file. So there's um there's some usability issues here long term. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to thank you. Go ahead. That's why I wanted to add this link uh, we were talking about and uh, Jan was talking about for Swedish lists to mm -hmm. upload picture basically directly without Discover yes. with with all these forms pre-filled, basically, because we know right. that if we, in addition, if we ask people to add a template, that's coming. That's very difficult for a person doing their first <laughs> upload and comments to fill it incorrectly. Right. Yes. Exactly. I think that's a great one. Is like, what are the alternative avenues for uploading that don't require you to click, tab, click, 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 click. It's just templates. Whether it's URL to commons or mobile apps, I think you're right. This is uh, people are kind of voting by going to other avenues for uploading. Yeah, yeah because for example, if you ask people to add a template with a QID of their natural, natural site, they will probably think, what is QID? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so you depend on some knowledge of our you know, unique identifier system and Wikidata, right? So that's so. why we are trying to profile it for them so that they don't have to discover it in this unfriendly way. That's right. Well, I want to thank you all for coming. It's, this has been great. I've learned a lot, but I've always watched Wiki Loves Earth from afar and I have a much deeper understanding of it now. And I'm sure everyone out there is watching has an I guess I was not alone because basically US and Canada and Mexico has been ignoring Wiki Loves Earth for way too long. So Richard and I put our head together to see how we can get more involvement on this side of the globe for I this project because it looks great. I think Canada was there last year. Canada was there last year and we had one of the winning photos from Canada, I think. Or it was oh. or I think Canada was like the best losers if they were like sixteens or something like that. Oh, okay. So I didn't have, see them on the map. So. We have some late breaking news. There is the photo from the Philippines contest. Let's oh, see if we right. can get it. So we... Oh, okay. Let's see if we can get that photo up. Um, 
<laughs> I don't think anyone's going to be able to can find you it like click, that. Can someone click that. It's not clickable. It's not clickable. Let me go into. I will go into Facebook for real and see if I can click it and bring it up then. Yeah, so we do now have a picture of said stump, I think. Or st not stump per se, but the trunk. Stump. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, let's see if that. This is our grand works. finale, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, we're promising a lot here with the finale. Uh, <laughs> so it's let's, very uh, exciting. I've been waiting for the end of the show. I mean, I mean. Little, 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 uh, drum roll, please. We have uh, that. Oh, let's, let's zoom in. Zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's cute. Lovely. Yeah, those are nice. Is that they're a glass? In the shape the, I think they're, they look like they're glass, and they're in the shape of the logo. They're the sort of the the sort of curved tree iconic logo. So that's really nice. Mm -hmm. yep. They've made it 3D. <laughs> wow. So have have any of you seen it? A Anton, Anastasia, Mikola, have you seen this before? Oh, you have. Mikola's seen it. I, I think that's one of the cooler awards I've ever seen in our movement. So. Yeah. That's one of the coolest ones. I have heard about something like that, but I have not seen this picture, so I think it should be on comments. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's Butch, how can we have to go to uh how, how can we have to go to Facebook to fight this? Let's get hey, it what's on up, Butch? <laughs> <laughs> not to what's shame him, him too much, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. We we really appreciate the time you took to uh, explain Wiki Loves Earth, and we look forward to seeing events and results and Jan you'll inform us of what's going on with the Swedish part and I'm we'd waiting. love to see yeah. the results from this year. All right, great. So thank you again for the folks who are hosting Wikipedia Weekly. Again, you're seeing us on four platforms, Facebook Live. If you haven't already, you can join our Facebook group, um, which is at, let me see, show it on screen there. There we are. Um, on Facebook under Wikipedia Weekly. We are also now have a brand new YouTube channel. If you see there, we actually have www.youtube.com slash C slash Wikipedia Weekly, and you can go there and be notified of all the new episodes that show up there. And you can like, comment, subscribe there. You can go to Twitter, Periscope to see us, and also Twitch. So thanks again, and send us any show ideas. You can go to the Wikipedia Weekly Network page on Meta. We also now have an ideas page, and we... We definitely welcome folks to bring guest ideas, show ideas, uh, demos, anything that you're interested in seeing, please let us know. All right. So thanks all for coming, and we'll see you next time on Wikipedia Week. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for organizing it.